A salary is the drug they give you when they want you to forget about your dreams. Welcome to the Corporate Dropout Podcast. I'm your host, Alessia Citro. After a successful career in tech, suffering from burnout, stress, and anxiety, I walked away from a multiple six-figure career to chase my passions and purpose as a coach and entrepreneur. This show is going to inspire, equip, and empower you to do the same. Let's get it. Hello, friends. Today, I have the honor of interviewing Debbie Neal. Debbie is one of the top income earners in her network marketing company, a motivational speaker, and a mother of four beautiful kids. She's also the host of one of my favorite podcasts, Level Up with Debbie Neal. Seriously, if you haven't listened to it yet, you need to go do that ASAP after you finish listening to this, of course. (laughs) Debbie, welcome to the Corporate Dropout Podcast, and thanks so much for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I have to tell you also, I am fangirling right now, like I'm meeting a celebrity. So it's it's really a dream to get to speak with you and learn from a wildly successful working mom. Thank you. And I appreciate <laughs> that. And you know, it, it's like, it's all perception, right? So we're so grateful for the for the businesses we build and the lives we create. But my my goal and my mission afterwards, especially when you saw like my, um, my tech abilities here on my end, right? Is that like... <laughs> Anybody, I don't want to say anybody can do what we do, but we really like you are talking to just a regular person who did what she said she was going to do and has 15 years invested in yeah. the industry and professional, you know, more than that in professional life. But it's amazing what consistency does compounded over time and it oh, does build influence seriously. and I'm grateful for it. Uh, Well, such a pleasure to learn from you today. So when I listened to your podcast episode about your background, there were a few things that struck me. One was your work ethic and how you didn't shy away from jobs that most people would deem either undesirable or maybe even beneath them. There was the job where you had to get there at 5.30 a.m. as a teenager, which to do that as a teenager, that just blows my mind. (laughs) And you also worked on the housekeeping staff at a senior home during your college summers. When you look back on all the jobs you've had, what would you say was the most impactful in terms of shaping your mindset or in terms of transferable skills that you still use today in your business? Okay. That's a great question. And I'd love to say I have a great answer. (laughs) However, I do believe it was a combination of all of them. And that's why we really say like life is a journey, right? Mm-hmm. So when you when you when you talk about the one when I was 13 years old, I worked at a bakery because it was the only place that would hire me without working papers, right? So <laughs> right. the lesson there was if you really want something, you're going to figure it out. You might have to be willing to do what most people won't do, but you can have it if you're if you're willing to make these conscious choices, right? So that was one working when you you mentioned the one with a nursing home. Now, first I have utmost respect for people who do work like this, right? We need people in all different fields, but the real lesson for me there, other than the actual physical act of working I was doing was that I learned how valuable time is. So in my mind, if I was going to work right? My mission for college, I was very blessed to have my college paid for, but my spending money was not going to be paid for. Okay. So I could have made a choice to work all year long, maybe with less effort and less hours, right? Which ties into network marketing, right? Or I can make a decision to go three months full out weekends, seven days a week, all of these hours, So I can create time while I'm in school and build the choice of not having to work and and kind of have that money spread throughout. So the lesson there was, if I'm going to work, I'm going to work. There's this thing called opportunity cost. And I didn't take that job. I had had a lot of my friends that were, you know, they were lifeguards or maybe they did something for five, you know, I'm going to turn 50 this year. So the going rate at that point was like $5 an hour to get for something. And so I wasn't looking to get credit for working. I was looking to build equity and money while I was at school, right? So that's another lesson that was learned. You know, I worked for CVS and I was a trainer. So I learned what hard work was. I were I learned hours I didn't want to do. I you know, so it was really every job that I've ever had, everything had the ability to add value to my mission in life. 
And another lesson is, this is what I believe, no matter what you're going to do for a living, do it, right? Like do it. I I didn't want to clean the floors in a nursing home, but if I was going to do it, I I was able to build the skill of cleaning a floor, right? So I was going to clean it to the best of my ability. I didn't enjoy cleaning a toilet, okay? But if I was going to do it, it doesn't take rocket science to learn how to do it well. And I think in life, so many people cut corners, And I just, Mm -hmm. it's all of these lessons throughout everything, which builds up our level of standards and excellence. And it just gives us one more thing to take with us when we find our calling in life. Yeah. So I don't know if that was an answer or not an answer, but I don't believe there was just one. No, that's so great. The thing that really strikes me about you too, just in listening to so many episodes of your podcast is the level of discipline that you have. So um, yeah, it, like my dad says, do it right or don't do it. <laughs> so when I heard your corporate dropout story, it sounded like a mic drop moment. You were working at CVS, you'd gotten a promotion, but the money didn't reflect your worth. And when they wouldn't increase your pay to match what you were worth, you quit. So can you tell me about that moment? Because I'm sure most people listening to this can relate to not feeling like they're properly compensated. So how how did you decide then and there to leave? Well, it's funny. I actually just told that story again on the episode that I just recorded prior to recording this with you. And my episode episode was on um, basically leaving the guilt of going out and building your dream life. And so I talked about mom guilt. I talked about all different things. So that, so I, I told that story because it was part of my journey. So for me, I was working. I knew that that was only going to be short term because I knew I wanted to be home with my kids. But the plan was to work at least six more months because I was pregnant with my second and we were living with my parents. We sold the house, having the second home built and we were banking money, right? Like why not take advantage of that time with my parents to be, and I was, I was a very healthy pregnant person. Although looking back, I was actually a truck. I looked like a small Nissan. <laughs> okay, when I was pregnant, but that's another whole separate conversation. I actually looked like a truck, but so I got a raise. And you know how you you can create a number in your mind. I mean, you could even talk to somebody on the phone, and you know how you create an image of what you think they're going to look like, and then you they either look like that or they look totally different. But we all create images. So with the promotion I got, there was a monetary image that I created. There was like. I don't know where I got the image from, but it was an image of a number in my head. And so when I got the promotion, it was actually, I don't remember the percentage. I want to say it was like a 10% raise, but it was a much different level of commitment and time and commuting. And so in my mind, it was going to be like, you know, I don't know, they were going to give me, you know, $100,000 more than I was earning. And so I was very shocked. I was a little bit disappointed. There was no personal growth in my life at that point. So gratitude didn't pop in my head. It was more like my 40 hour work week wasn't 40 hours. It's almost like if I walked out and I don't think it was a diss to CVS, but I think we kind of live in this culture. Like if you're scheduled eight to five, you don't leave at five. If you leave at five, you're irresponsible. You're lazy. You're running out the door. There's got to be something else you, you need to do. Right. And, or maybe that was just my, my thinking. So I was always there later, I, you know, an eight to five would easily be an eight to seven or whatever. So all of a sudden I thought more hours, more time, more time away from my babies. I'm worth so much more than this. And he, and I was good friends with my boss and he said, I'm going to go back. You know, you're right. And he did come back with like a 2% or a 3% more than that. And again, not focusing on gratitude. I was like, if you divide, and, and at the time I really felt like I was making a nice living, but if you divide it hourly, I felt like I was making 13 and a half cents an hour. And I was like, no, like I'm, I'm worth more than this. And then he said, I think you're worth millions, Deb, but I can't pay you what the job is worth. I can only pay you what the position's worth. And I was like, but I want to be paid what I'm worth. And so he said, that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And I, and I didn't know anything about network marketing. I, and I was like, I just, you know, you see the Jerry Maguire. It was like, you know, when he all of a sudden got this vision, this mission statement, and all of a sudden he found himself like jobless, you know? And, and I was like, I'm going to find it. I quit. You have my two weeks notice. And so when I went home and I shared this news with my husband, he was like, this wasn't the plan. I'm like, I know. <laughs> It wasn't the plan, but I ended up just enjoying the time by the pool and I wasn't giving birth till December and it was time off. And so it was at that very moment, I I thought I'm going to find something 
I'm going to find something that will pay me what I'm worth. And I remember him saying, when you find it, you let me know. And you better believe when I grew to the top of where I was building, there was a little post-it on my story that said, I found it. Because I was never afraid to work hard, but I I really realized I was born to be in an effort-based business. Yes. That's what I was born to well, be in. And, and let me ask you too, you know, it sounds like you kind of realized that you we're done trading time for money because if you have gifts like you have, like there's so much more that, that you could do with it outside of the 24 hours that we have in a day. So is that also something that clicked with you? Absolutely. So why not lay a foundation? You know, as I, I had no idea what I was going to do professionally, but I started to journal what I wanted my life to look like the vehicle I was looking, right? And mm-hmm. so I began to look into franchises. I began to look into so many different things and like just praying for the answer. And so I believe and knew there was something that I could create, invest the time, but create more time, Yes, right? Exchange my time for unlimited time. And so knowing that I could only do so much, I, there's only so many hours in my day and in my week and in my year, and I will never do something 24 hours a day other than breathe. So I didn't really have all the time in my day. There was only a certain amount of time I was willing to do it. So I was praying and manifesting for something that I could invest the time, but it would have the potential to reap the rewards outside of just me. Yeah. So one of the things I admire most about you is how you have parented four kids while building a huge business. What advice would you give to the working mom who wants more for herself and her family? Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is what my whole podcast was just on. So I wanted- (laughs) And we didn't plan that either. No, we didn't plan (laughs) it. I I really thought once I became a mom, my dream was to be a stay-at-home mom. I really did. I was like, I don't, I don't love anything more than I, than I, than I love Brooke. I only had the one baby at the time. I'm like, I, I don't love my job more. I don't love anything more than I love her. And I didn't have choices. I didn't set myself up with choices. And so I worked until that moment we, you and I just spoke about. And then after three years, I was like, where is the Debbie that I know? Where is the Mm. passion and the energy and the drive and the discipline and the hunger and the, the, the community and the energy? Like, where did that woman go? And I was going to bed just feeling guilty, thinking I'm not living my best life. I'm not living my best life. And when we don't, when we don't become our best, we can't give our best. Right. And so the advice I'd give any mom is you're, and everybody's different. Everybody's situation is different, but I love my best when I love myself first. Does that make sense? And so I wasn't loving me. I wasn't proud of what I was creating. I didn't feel beautiful when I looked in the mirror. And I don't mean like beautiful, like your hair is done, your makeup's done. I mean like the beautiful of knowing I'm contributing. I feel amazing. I'm filling myself up. I'm helping others. I'm leaving an impact. I'm creating a legacy. I'm showing my kids what it looks like to build a life of significance and dreams and choices. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm settling. I didn't, want to say, we can't do this because I'm home with you. I can't pay for college because I'm home with you. And so because I made a decision to become my very best and I'm still on that journey, like we don't, we don't become our best with a promotion and we don't become our best with an amount of earnings that we earn through whatever vehicle it's going to be. We, we become our best when we don't, when we don't rest, when we continue evolving, when we keep, when we keep growing, when we stop evolving, we die. And so I am a better mom because I'm even this conversation that I'm having with you right now, it fills something inside of my soul that when I hang up, like my kids got the text, mom's recording, everybody be quiet for two hours. This household runs on business and goals and dreams and life and aspirations. And so it's not a sacrifice there. I want them to believe that they can be anything they want. I want them to believe that life can be full of choices and abundance and prosperity. But I also want them to know anything worthwhile takes effort. And there's always that choice. You can go out and build somebody else's dream and there's nothing wrong with it. But you could also watch me build mine. And maybe that's something that you might want to do. It might not be, right? But I I just always 
want to be the best example, not the perfect example, because I'm far from perfect. Some days I go to bed and I'm like, I'm feeling like a great mom. And then other days I'm like, not so much. Right. (laughs) So, yeah, I have plenty of those days, too. (laughs) <laughs> well, and you'd mentioned earlier, uh, and, and so we'll have to tune into the episode that you just recorded, but you'd mentioned mom guilt and having it. How did you let go of that? Because I feel like there's such an expectation for moms to be martyrs, right? And that, you know, their identity dies when they when they have a child. Now they're just mom, right? So how, how did you how did you let go of that, that mom guilt? Well, I, I switched my perspective. Okay. So I had mom guilt because I felt a part of me had died, but then I didn't want to have the guilt of not becoming my very best me and, and being a better influence in their lives. Right. So I turned that around. And then as I was going out building my business and sometimes there was faces pressed up against the glass saying like, mommy, don't go or mommy do the puzzle. I was like, Okay, so maybe I'm not going to be home every single night, but it's not about the minutes we're together. It's the minutes that are worthwhile, right? And and really have, I would structure my day of like, we have an hour of coloring time, an hour of puzzle time. That to me is more uh, valuable than six hours of like all over the place and rushing and scatterbrain time, right? It's the quality time that we have. And then there was things that I also wasn't willing to have guilt for. So what about the guilt of the mom guilt of knowing I could have been more, but settled? What about the guilt of showing my children that anything is possible, but yet I didn't go for my dreams. Instead of using them as my why, I I treated them like my excuse of why I lived smaller. And it's not coming from a judgment point of view. There are some people that that's their dream. I thought my dream was to be a stay-at-home mom and do nothing else. And if that's yours, God bless you. That was once mine but it wasn't enough for me. Doesn't make it right, wrong, or indifferent. But what about the guilt of looking at your children and saying, I gave up an income to be with you and vacations are just really expensive. We can't go on it. I love vacations. I love to travel. I love to create memories. So whenever I felt guilty walking out the door, I thought I'm working to take my family on a vacation. Now, student loans are very, very common today. Okay. But when we know better, we do better, right? And I didn't, there's no guarantees of income, no matter what business it is, okay? And it's not because a certain business did this, it's because I decided to be different and I decided to work something like a beast, not like an average person, okay? And so I could have said, you know what? I'm so sorry that you're graduating with $200,000 worth of debt, but mommy never missed a night to tuck you in, sweet boy. Never missed a night. Or... You probably won't remember that night, but how grateful they'll feel when they graduate with no student debt. And so when my daughter, who's 22 years old, graduated this past May, that was one of the greatest moments of pride because I thought I could have easily not done this. It was expensive. I could have easily had a really good reason, but instead I switched the guilt around. And when I felt guilty going, I thought, choose your guilt, Deb. Are you, do you feel bad leaving or will you feel guilt that she graduates with debt? One's not right, wrong and one's not right. It's not coming. It's whatever works for us. So I just took that guilt and I switched it around because everything's an exchange. If you give up the guilt today or avoid the guilt today, what is it costing you in 10 years? What will you not be able to do in 10 years because you did today? And I looked and said, what can I do today that will create more in the future? Everything's an exchange. Nothing is free. Freedom isn't free. It's the sacrifice we're willing to make to create our definition of freedom. Mm, I love that. I flipped the mom guilt around like that too, because I feel like, you're the best mom when you are filling your cup, right? You can't pour from an empty one, living out your dreams, whatever it might be. And I love the way that you say that too. I mean, it's it's not coming from a place of judgment, right? Like to each their own, but you have to do what's what's best for you and what's best for your family and be really unapologetic about it. A hundred percent, because you know what? There was people that also looked at me and said, I would never do that. That's fine. The way totally. you parent, the way I'm here on this earth to share my journey, share my wins, share my losses, share my mm-hmm. lessons, share my perspective. 
it's like it's like a, a a funnel. It's like a big strainer. Take what you feel brings you value. Let the rest flow through. But yeah. I'm also not here for anybody else's approval. I'm not. And when we when we when we realize that, we kind of gain our power. I'm not here because somebody else approves. I'm doing what I feel is best for me and my family. And if that could possibly impact somebody or give them permission to step into their light and become their very best self, if one person can dream bigger and know you can be an amazing parent and build an amazing business, you actually can have it all. You can. And I think where some of the guilt comes from is when people say they're doing something or think they're doing something, but when they're away, they're not really playing full out. And when they're home, they're thinking of everything they should be doing. So what happens? We end up, mm, yes. we end up not doing anything well, right? And we think we're yep. making a sacrifice, but we're not. We're just not moving forward. Yep. Mel Robbins spoke at my network marketing company's annual convention this summer. And she said something that really stuck with me. It's be where your feet are. So when you're at work, you're all out working the business, right? Or doing whatever it is that you're doing. When you're with your kids, you're all in with your kids. So that's something that I've been trying to live by more and more. Because like you said, it's so easy to just spin your wheels. So final mom question for you. What would you tell a mom like me? So I have one child. Uh, she's going to be three in November. So we're in the thick of it right now with um, all the fun toddler stuff. But I do feel like I'm back to being myself and back to thriving. And I would like another child, but I'm kind of afraid to have another. You know, I don't want to like upset the apple cart. I'm afraid of getting back into survival mode. So what advice would you give me? Like, how have you balanced being a mom and an entrepreneur while continuing to thrive? I would tell you to absolutely have another as quick as humanly possible. Okay. And this is why, this is why <laughs> I'll I tell my husband that. <laughs> and this is why I would tell you because of the reality, I know what you're thinking. Okay. You build a business different than mine, but in the same family, right? And you're thinking, mm -hmm. gosh, I built this momentum. And what if I take a few steps backward? What if? And I'm not saying mm -hmm. that's going to happen, but sometimes you got to fall to rise right? And it'll be another lesson mm -hmm. for you, right? It'll be a lesson of building what you've built now with one baby with another. Will it be one more thing in your already busy life? Yeah. But think of how now when you bring people into your business, when you enroll people into your business, one of the things I say to people is like, you've already got a really busy life. Will it be one more thing in your busy plate? Yes. Will it be one more thing to make you out of balance? Yes. And you know, we go through all this. So this is going to grow you as a leader, right? Your mm, vision, I'm yeah. assuming, is to have a team full of thriving entrepreneurs that also create a beautiful family life, right? That's not always right, smooth. Right. So leaders go first. Leaders go mm, first. Yeah. And so when you're in the thick of it, it's okay, especially when you're building the business like you have, because you probably have leaders, right? That during those moments are going to be building their business, no matter how you're feeling, right? That's the idea. But I always tell my leaders whenever they've had a fear of when I reach this level, you know, I'll have another baby. I'm like, no, ha don't, don't do that. <laughs> have the baby, yeah. build the business, right? Because at the end of the day, my business doesn't come before my family. I build it because of my family, mm. right? Yeah, but I that's a great never reframe. never hold back. Building what we build is all about having faith, right? And releasing the fears and knowing everything is going to be perfect. Now, look, sometimes you can say, well, maybe if I do this, I'll lose a few people because they need to be handheld, right? You were going to lose those people anyway. Totally. Totally. Okay? You'll never lose a leader. You'll mm. never lose a leader. You might lose somebody like, you know, when we build this type of business, you might be like, your raft might be going down the water and all of a sudden there's a hole and you're covering it and you're covering it and you're covering it and you're covering it. You're covering it. You can't cover every hole or eventually the raft is going to, right? So the idea is every time I've grown through things in my life, I have lost people. I have lost, but it's like 
then I always say, whoever's meant to be in my life and my business, thank you. Whoever's not meant to be, I wish them well, right? So I would tell you to lose that fear, especially, you know, my children, my first two were two years apart. They have that bond, that relationship, you know? So if you said, look, I want them separated. I was four years separated from my brother. I can see the advantage for my parent. One children out of college, one went in. Okay. So Brooke and Tyler were two years apart. That means I had two years of two children in private college. Okay. Oh man. I went to private college so I can sympathize with that tuition bill. So one went to St. Joseph's university where the tuition I think is 70,000. And the other one is going to her sinus where the tuition 78,000 do the math. Right. So to some people, they want to space that four years. So when one goes out, right. I didn't think (laughs) at that at the time (laughs) I could understand that reasoning. So if somebody say that's my reasoning, that totally makes sense. Okay. I get it because now I have one child in, but in when he's out, I have twins. They're going to both be in together for, so I always have pretty much two kids in college. But if, if, if it's not because of finances and it's not because of health, it's simply because your business, this is going to grow your leadership. Leaders go first. Your team is watching, right? Mm, Maybe they want to have another baby, but they don't know it's possible to have with two babies. Mm. Well, I think I need to make a call to Jeff after we get off this recording session and tell him. Maybe maybe you need to FaceTime me on the announcement when it comes (laughs) back. I feel like I'm now a part of it, you know? I know. You're invested now. I'm invested now. (laughs) I love that advice, though, because I'm all about abundant thinking. And I know that that is a fear-based thought. And so thank you for um, kicking me back into the right mindset. I appreciate that. Perfect. That's my (laughs) role. So shifting gears a bit, there are two questions that I'm dying to ask you. One of my favorite episodes of your podcast was the one on simple habits. Mm -hmm. And you talk about making your bed every day, but not just making it, making it like you're in the Marine Corps. I am a recovering perfectionist. So I have to know, how do you walk the line between excellence and perfectionism? Um, This is a real, I'm walking the same you know, the struggle is real. Okay. (laughs) And I don't like to, here's, here's my thing. I might've talked about it in the podcast, but I also believe there's a right way to load the dishwasher. I believe that. (laughs) I do too. (laughs) And and I'll tell you what the right way is. When you maximize every inch of space in the dishwasher. Okay. So I have four children. They're very active. My two boys, it could be 11 o'clock at night. They're like, we still need 2000 calories. I'm like, sweet Jesus. Okay. So (laughs) always dishes, always pots and pans. When it's put in there wrong, because there's there's not a a Debbie way, there's a right way and a wrong way. Okay. And so I, there's that part of me, like, I just, I should be so grateful that they loaded the dishwasher. I should be so grateful that they loaded their bed, that they made their bed. But why wouldn't you take an extra two minutes to do it the right way, right? So when I make my bed, I'm not just one that's just going to pull it up and and like I'm sitting here now. I made a podcast office up in my bedroom. My bedroom has like a big sitting area off. This way I'm out of my business office, totally two different spaces, right? And so I could see my bed. From where I'm sitting, I could see my bed. I would turn it around to show you my bed, but I don't. I don't even know if I can get it right. Then I might undo the mic, and Chase will get it. <laughs> um, I'll use my imagination. But it's like <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm a recovering perfection. I don't even know if I'm recovering. I don't know if I can recover. I might. I might. I might have come to peace with it, but I like things a certain way. But what I am doing is finding the praise when people do things the right way, instead of always being the, you know, like my daughter has been amazing at cleaning her. She's so amazing. But sometimes I'd go up there and be like, I don't even understand. Like I'm so, but now when I say, I'm like, your room is amazing. And it's like, instead of giving the positive instead of why does it look like this? How can you live like this? Why is it? Because my clean means nothing. It means nothing on the my end tables in my room. It means no stitch of clothing on the floor. It means at any point company could walk in and the room is perfect. And I don't do it because company's coming over. I do it because I feel the most peace. I can't operate in any sort of clutter, in any sort of disarray. I mean, even before I started working this morning, it has to be dishwashers unloaded, laundry is done, kitchen is clean from breakfast. Like I have to be at ground zero because then it's in my mind that it needs to be done. 
I was now, just going to ask that. Is the reason you do that to free up yes. computing space, for lack of a better term? Yes. But then there are times like that I'm in so much momentum that I've gathered up. I mean, I remember the beginning of my business. I was like, oh my gosh, I have not done laundry. And I don't even know when I took all the clothes, gathered them up, threw them in the garbage and bought new. I was like, I can't look at it and I don't have time to do it. Okay. So I'm just going to throw it in the garbage. Oh my gosh. This is me right now with the laundry. (laughs) Well, I can tell you what I did. I best investment I ever made was I got an au pair. Um, It's not for everybody. Um, I had an au pair and then she became a nanny, but it was like the, I was like, I'm just going to work a little bit harder so I can afford this. Because for me, then what it did was when I wasn't working my business, instead of doing laundry, instead of cooking for my kids, instead of doing, I was fully present with them. Yeah. Best yep. money I ever spent. One of the things that I had also wanted to ask you was about outsourcing. And it sounds like, you know, if it's not something that's bringing you joy or really adding to your life, it sounds like you would give the advice to hire it out. 100%. 100%. Yeah. I mean, like that I had the years my children were young. Well, I have, I mean, I have somebody that cleans my house once a week. I don't want to spend time doing that. I don't, right. I don't even know what it would take, how much time to clean my house. I'm right. I, I'd rather work harder. When I was babysitting, I remember when I walked away from my job and my husband at the time was like, you know, we'll give up this because we'll, you have to make some sacrifices in exchange. And he's like, right. you don't need somebody to clean the house. I don't even know what it was at the time. And I was like, absolutely not. I will babysit <laughs> a child to pay to clean the house. Yeah, I am not because that will take me X amount of hours a week and I'm not doing it. But I also knew what that would cost me. And then how could I create that? Right. Yep. So uh, now with, with a family, the size that I have, I have to vacuum, you know, my kitchen every day and wipe down my kitchen. You're doing cleaning, but like right. all of the bigger stuff, somebody comes once a week, all of my sheets are changed. All of that stuff is done. And then when my children were younger, you know, my au pair cooked for them, did their laundry, straightened their rooms, played with them. And then when I had my ch- chunks of time to be with them, I didn't have to worry about anything, but purely being present with them. So another thing for my mom guilt is I, I've watched a lot of stay at home moms that they're cleaning, they're cooking, they're doing laundry. They're not building a business, but yet they still don't have the quality time with their kids where I made that, you know, I I was working so I could do that. And then have the, I I felt like I had tons of quality time with my children, tons. Mm. You're inspiring me to hire more things out especially the laundry. Sandy Critides was a guest the other week and her and I become real good friends. And she jokes that like, I'm always posting, you know, an Instagram reel or something like that, that revolves around doing laundry. Like I always have laundry. And I I talk about that all the time on Instagram. Like, yeah, I still haven't found anyone to fold my laundry yet. So I I I definitely need to hire that out. I do do my own laundry (laughs) now because I don't have a live-in anymore. But uh, you know what? I always joke. If you look, people are like, mom, where are you? I'm like, where do you think I am? I'm in the laundry room. And because yeah, I'm we so live in there. With it, I do two <laughs> loads a day. It's really not a big deal for me. Um, but I wouldn't mind having somebody now, but I, I do that now. And I'm fine with it. My kids are older. They're not babies anymore. And they're off doing their stuff. You know, I'm doing my laundry at 530 in the morning when everybody's sleeping, you know, so it's really not a big deal. Let me ask you too. Final question on laundry. <laughs> I talk way too much about laundry. Do you maximize the time when you're in there? Do you listen to podcasts or do yes. you know audible yes. or anything like that? I'm either listening to stuff or I've got a list of calls, whether it's people on my team mm-hmm. or, you know, it's not calls that I'm sharing the business or the products with people because then I'm in my office and it's a little bit more of a professional setting. They're not going to be like, what do you mean? Right. But if I was talking to you and right. you're on my team, and all of a sudden my kids are coming in, alone, I want you to know, I mean, I do my best to make it professional, but I'm, I'm doing this and I'm also so doing life. Human. Right. I'm yeah, human. totally. So when I'm doing laundry, I've got my earbuds in and I am catching up on calls. I'm listening to podcasts. I'm so it's really not time away. Just like when I'm driving and I'm going places, that's an office for me. Like I'll say to people, I'm going to be in the car an hour at this time and an hour at that time, let's schedule calls. And I'm, I maximize 
my time. And sometimes the the car ride is more productive than my home because yeah. my home is very lived in. It's very active. There's, in fact, my son, his girlfriend is leaving for college um, on Tuesday and we love her. I mean, she's basically another daughter to me and I'm having a business meeting here Monday night at my house. And he's like, Oh, I was going to have some friends over, you know, Jamie's leaving. I'm like, Oh, we could do it all. You guys stay by the pool. I'll order in some pizzas, you know, just be good. Be that that they're not, but like, just be quiet during that time. And I'm going to run a meeting on my outside patio because at the end of the day, I want people to say, okay, in my busy life, I can also build this. Yeah. I love that. So closing the loop on the excellence versus perfectionism, it sounds like the way you look at it is just having a high standard and just maximizing time and whatever it is you're doing, whether it's loading the dishwasher or making your bed. That's it. It's making the most of the minutes. I think we spend a lot of time thinking. Yes, we do. And stressing, (laughs) right? Instead of just... Max, yesterday I did a community service. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram. You should have seen the way I looked yesterday. I did this community service. (laughs) Now I'm going to have to go look. (laughs) No, you're going to laugh. And actually, (laughs) you have to look before stories only last 24 hours, and I was done at five. So you have to look as soon as we're done. So, one of the great (laughs) things about building a business with our kids. I mean, building our business from home, my kids, my, I'm doing community service. Will you do it with me? I'm like, yes. Well, I I did my hair. I took a shower and I'm like, oh, I'll just put on makeup. I've got meetings at night. I was out on a field that was actually the temperature read 101, but it felt like 151. I've Mm. never, it was two hours. I knew I had to be there two hours. I could have now uh, Bailey was like, mom, you don't have to do this. You can go sit in the car. And I knew that I didn't, but I was like, I already told you I would do this. I'm going to do it. And we were taking corn off the stalks and we got off the stalk. We were stamping it down and flattening it. My clothes, you could wring out. The sweat was dripping. (laughs) My hair looked like Elvira. Okay. And all I kept thinking of is I'm here for two hours. Do the most you can for two hours. Do the most you can for two hours. Don't whine. Don't complain. Don't wish you weren't here. Just do the most you can for two hours. And I think with anything, we could be like, you were thinking, like I was thinking about, I'm not going to look good for my meeting. How am I going to fix this situation? I'm completely soaking wet. Why did I shower before I came? And I'm like, you're here for two hours. Just make the best of two hours, get as much corn as you can. And then we're going to roll at six o'clock. So I did a story when I got in the car, I was soaked. And then I'm like, I had a meeting in 30 minutes. I got to pull it together. I love my child. I love my child. I love my child. (laughs) So anyway, that's it. Yeah. And just being, being fully present is the thing I I'm hearing from you over and over again with everything. So just yeah, be where you are and yeah. enjoy where you are and not question the choices. And I, I still do it. I'm like, should I have done this? This is like, I have so much to do tonight. I'm, I'm, I have a brand <laughs> new person like who's seeing me on zoom and I, I look like a lunatic <laughs> and I'm like, it's all going to be good. It's all going to be good. It's all going to be good. I told my daughter I would be here. I, and again, it's all those lessons. I told her yeah. I would be there. I t- she's like, mom, you're getting, su-. and she was so cute. She's like, I didn't bring a hair tie. Cause I didn't know I was going to sweat like a beast. I did my hair. <laughs> so she took her hair tie out of her hair. You know, it was like the sweetest thing because Aww. when you have your hair sitting on your neck and it's 150 oh. degrees, yeah, she no. was dying, it's miserable, dying. And I was wiping my face <laughs> on her shirt. <laughs> I hope that that's on the stories too. <laughs> yeah, uh, oh, trust me. You'll get a good glimpse of it on the story. <laughs> but you know what? It all makes you more relatable. So it's it's good to show up like that sometimes. Amazing. Um, so the second question that I had to ask you, and this will be the final one of the interview. You're a woman of faith. You talk about that a lot on your episodes, which I love. And you're also a master manifester. I, I loved your episode on the law of attraction. Like that is a must listen. And lately I've had several conversations with people, Christians specifically, and I, I too am a Christian. They feel like believing in God and leveraging the law of attraction are at odds with each other, perhaps. So what would you say to that? My belief is that they're all one. That's what I believe. I believe believe the law of attraction is God, okay? But if that's not what you believe, you know, not every, you know, it's funny. I said this to Chase um, yesterday. I go, you know, a couple of my last ones were really godly. And I I had a little bit of nerves when I went to bed. You know, what will people think? I don't want to, not what will people think, but I don't want to, I don't want to turn somebody off if that's not their 
belief, but at the end of the day, I've got to be who I am. Right. Yeah. And we're not going to appeal to everybody. We're not ice cream, but I believe (laughs) that the law of attraction, when you discover what's behind the law of attraction, it's the great law of prosperity, which all Mm -hmm. goes back to Jesus. It all goes back to God. It Mm -hmm. all goes back to the Bible. I believe they don't contradict each other. I believe that they are one in the same. The law of attraction is divine substance. It's the energy of like God being around. That's what prayers are. But, you know, the most powerful prayers are affirmations. When you're speaking that out loud, you're basically saying, I am the child that you made me to be. I am successful. I am wealthy. I am abundant. I am this. I am, I am, you know, it's like we all have God inside of us, which is the law of attraction. So I believe they're all intertwined. Mm. Oh, I love that answer so, so much. And, you know, that I think is the most powerful part too, right? Like knowing that essentially it's all love and light and we're all made of the same stuff. And it's just a matter of, of owning that and leveraging it and, and believing that you're worth it. Right. And it's tapping into that source energy, that deep Mm -hmm. subconscious energy, right. That that fuels us. It, our subconscious thinking actually runs our life. Yes. That's what runs our life. And so it's it's focusing on that. It's believing in that. Because I believe when you really have faith, it does dissolve fears, especially even when you go out and build whatever it is you want to build in life. Like there's going to be fears. I've had fears, but they melt away because my faith is so strong and I know that I was made for a bigger purpose and I know that everything is leading me to the next level of of love and service and faith. And so I will blindly, you know, take that next step because I just have so much faith. Mm. And I, I love refuse that. to be paralyzed in fear. Refuse. Yes. Yes. And I don't think that's how God wants us to live. Like he didn't create us to just endure life. It's meant to be enjoyed. So I love that. No, he didn't. So much. But people end up living a life that way because if you don't believe you're worthy, right? Yeah. You're going to yep. stay in the wilderness till you believe you're Absolutely. worthy. And then you're going to go to your promised land. Yeah. And you'll stay yeah. there for as long as it takes. If Moses would stay there 40 years, it might take other people just as long till you believe that you can. Yeah. Uh, this was so wonderful. Debbie, can you tell people where they can find and connect with you? Well, you can find me anywhere where you would find podcasts and you can search Level Up with Debbie Neal. And you can also follow me on Instagram at levelup.debbieneal and also my regular page, which is Debbie underscore Neal. So it's been amazing getting to know you and meeting you. So this was really fun. Likewise. Uh, this is such an honor so wonderful getting to interview you and just hear your perspective. You're such a light. So thank you so, so much for coming on and thank each of you for listening to the show. Go check out Debbie. As soon as this episode ends, you'll be so glad that you did. So if today's episode inspired you or added value to your life in some way, please subscribe, leave a five-star review and share it with someone who needs this. You can help me get the word out about the show by taking a screenshot of this episode, sharing it to social media and tagging me and Debbie. And I would love to connect with you on Instagram. I want to hear how this show is helping you and what you want to hear more of. So don't hesitate to slide into the DMs anytime. And you can find me at Corporate Dropout Official or Alessia Citro. That's A-L-E-S-S-I-A-C-I-T-R-O and two underscores. Until next time, remember, you're a badass. Stay focused, stay hungry, and dare to drop out.